Welcome. Welcome to my video blog. First of all, a shout out to, my, uh, to those who have watched my videos and have written me. Thank you for all your supportive emails. So today I'm going to talk about malignant narcissists, the most dangerous and harmful narcissists there are. To understand malignant narcissists, you have to understand what is, what is a sociopath or what is someone with an antisocial personality disorder. Simply, this is a person that has no empathy, who can commit crimes, uh, both white collar crimes, um, violence, sexual crimes, um, any type of crime um, without having remorse or empathy. There is a difference between what I would call the garden variety narcissist and the malignant narcissist. The malignant narcissist actually is a combination of three personality disorders. We think of narcissistic personality disorder, we think of paranoid personality disorder, and we think of antisocial personality disorder or sociopathy or the sociopath. The malignant narcissist is the narcissist who thinks only about himself, who, who is entitled and grandiose, but yet they believe that they deserve the world's attention, a person's attention, society's attention so much that they will go to any means to secure that. They also are paranoid. They are, they, they are suspicious that people are going to hurt them, take their power away, want to take what they so deserve. They are antisocial or they're, they're sociopaths. They have uh, little to no remorse for the people they hurt because they deserve um, what they need or what they're going to take if they believe it, does, um, it, it is their right or it belongs to them. The malignant narcissist is the type of narcissist you should be very afraid of because they can, unlike the sociopath, seem normal in a relationship. What differentiates the malignant narcissist from someone who's um, ASPD or someone who's a sociopath is malignant narcissists have empathy for those they believe belong to them to those they believe will follow them. They can be in a relationship. Let's look at Hitler. On the outside, it looks like all of these mass murderers were sociopaths or psychopaths. But that's not the case. Because psychopaths, as, as we understand, are really unable to have a relationship. They don't desire a relationship. In fact, the idea of being in a relationship is, is not that satisfying for them. But the malignant narcissist enjoys, appreciates, and will do almost anything to have followers to protect others um, to represent a community, a city, a country. And this malignant narcissist will do anything to protect themselves. So let's think about Hitler, Stalin for that matter. I mean, we know how many millions of people um, Hitler killed. Uh, many people don't know that Stalin is responsible for the deaths between 20 and 60 million people. We'll never know exactly because of, of, of his paranoid, secretive and highly top secret methods of hiding the trails of the murders that he and his people committed. But these individuals, as malignant narcissists, they loved, needed, and required people to love them. They rose to power by representing themselves as a savior of types, a person who can um, protect them from the oppressor. Fidel Castro is another example. People believed in them. They thought that they would be, uh, be represented and protected. You are about to see Fidel Castro, leader of the successful rebel forces who overthrew the dictatorship of General Batista. We want to ask you about your personal plans and about what you hope for your country. As one who has spoken very eloquently about the civil rights that yes. must be guaranteed to the Cuban yes. people, how do I you will explain? never be against any right that is my thinking in politics. Very I am good. not communist at all. 
but I will never be against any right. Well, may I ask you, sir, why is it when you have that attitude, which you obviously believe very strongly, why with that attitude have there been so many executions across Cuba without open free trials? Well, not so many. How many? I don't know exactly about why you two or three dozen of criminals, because I think the judge is the first thing necessary for the happiness of the country. Well, so the malignant narcissist enjoys, if not gets off, on the idea of protecting people and being, uh, protecting the motherland or the fatherland. But during their ascent to power, they will kill, murder, and hurt anyone who gets in their way, similar to a sociopath because their narcissistic urge to get power and to protect their legion of followers um, compels them to do almost anything. And once in power, the malignant narcissist will maintain his or her um, power structure that will, by itself, keep it up, keep it going so that no one can threaten it. The garden variety narcissists are pretty obvious if you look for them. These are the, the self-centered, the conceited, the grandiose, the entitled, the people that talk all the time, the people that want to argue and say it's their idea, the people that if you confront, they will deny it and get mad at you and say it's your fault, you know, the regular narcissist. And then we talked about the covert narcissist uh, a while ago, and which is on my other video, um, the covert narcissist, the wolf in sheep's clothing. The covert narcissist, of course, pretends to be um, normal to gain power and projects this loving, giving, um, and altruistic side. But the malignant narcissist, this is a tricky one. Let me give you an example of a malignant narcissist in a relationship. Typically, um, these individuals present themselves, like any narcissist, as important, as worthy of um, love, admiration. They present themselves as bold and dynamic. Um, but the malignant narcissist, unlike the garden variety narcissist, has an aggressive edge, has anger, talks about all the people that have hurt him in a way that elicits sympathy or empathy. Remember, as I've talked about in my book and my trainings, narcissists are able to compel codependents to want to be in a relationship with them. So this might sound kind of unrealistic, but if you're a, a codependent and you have not been in therapy, you'll know that you are susceptible to the guile and the manipulation um, of the malignant narcissist. You will see him as this um, poor individual um, who has been hurt, disregarded, um, marginalized, and you're going to feel sorry for him. As he is going to present himself as his victim, who is going to make you want to support him. The codependent is going to understand these stories, is going to comprehend um, these stories and feel badly. And the malignant narcissist is very good at eliciting, symp eliciting sympathy. Remember, they have that psychopathy, that sociopathy, that antisocial personality disorder edge. They are able to lie. They are able to manipulate. They are able to cheat in order to get what they need. And just like a sociopath, they do it believably. So the codependent falls in love with this individual, this malignant narcissist, who seems so bold and charming, and their anger and their resentment for those who have hurt them is believable. They want to believe in this person because they have, they have set the stage for their own victimization in a way that you want to protect them. You want to fight their fight. Um, this person is going, to, um, is going to manipulate the codependent and tra entrap the codependent. And once, they, and once they have that individual ensnared or entrapped in their relationship, that is when their sociopathy comes out. That is when, if you cross them, they will do anything to maintain their power. This is the narcissist that will beat you, that will hurt you, that will um, manipulate others in order to get you or to um, ensure that you follow what he needs. Unlike the sociopath, 
The malignant narcissist needs your relationship, wants you to love him or her, gets upset if you don't love him or her. He really wants to connect to you. And all of a sudden, once we are in this relationship and we are connected through what I call the human magnet syndrome, which probably means you're codependent, you'll find out that this person is paranoid. He's suspicious that people are out to get him. He will do anything to maintain his relationship with you. He'll tell you not to believe your mother, not to believe your, your best friends, because in his paranoid mind, people are trying to break you up and end the relationship. His sociopathic side, his psychopathic side will come out. He will do things to others to maintain his power over you. He will send them letters um, and he will call them. He will pretend to represent you in a way that ends that relationship and manipulates your friend your family to, to have negative, if not angry thoughts about you. The malignant narcissist is very scary because they will stop at nothing to maintain what is important to them. And, sim and what is important to them is their narcissistic needs for validation, affirmation, importance, and money. It sometimes is difficult to diagnose a malignant narcissist because often we want to jump to the conclusion that they're a psychopath or a sociopath or as we say in the psychological field has antisocial personality antisocial personality disorder but the difference is they really want you to love him they really want the relationship but if they if you get in their way if somehow you cross their path they'll hurt you and the empathy, not much. Because the empathy that narcissists have, including malignant narcissists, is really about how this person that they, the, the per, this person that they feel close to or empathy with, it's really about how it impacts them. So in conclusion, malignant narcissists are the most dangerous of all narcissists. If you'd like to find out more information about malignant narcissists, I would like to recommend that you read my book, The Human Magnet Syndrome, Why We Love People Who Hurt Us, or go to humanmagnetsyndrome.com and uh, consider purchasing one of my seminars, which are on many of the topics I talk about, including this. Um, this particular topic is, in, um, is, is contained within the training called Codependence and, Nar and Narcissist Understanding the Attraction. Like always, I've enjoyed having this connection with you. Thank you for viewing this video and thank you even more for not forgetting about how important you are and how important our, our needs are. We all deserve to be loved. And if you're a codependent or someone who has been manipulated by a malignant narcissist or for that matter, any type of emotional manipulator, don't give up. There's hope. Take care and I'll see you soon.